I appreciate you tuning in today to this uh, short devotion. I have a question. Who is the real Jesus? You know, the Apostle John writes in his account of the life of Jesus that Jesus was the perfect balance of compassion and holiness, the fullness of grace and the fullness of truth. And that's literally, I believe, what everyone on planet Earth is looking for. And so we as Christians, we as followers of Jesus, we, we must live in this world pursuing the same way Jesus walked, full of grace and full of truth. Now, we must learn to live in a culture that in many ways opposes God, and, but we've got to learn to show the same grace to those that we disagree with. And, and you know, even Jesus said as much in his teachings when he said, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. And if you do good to those that are just good to you, what credit is that to you? Even the world does that. Instead, we in Christianity, we, we get caught up in complaining about the world. We find ourselves sometimes disgusted with the culture, and so we end up looking like judges of the world instead of witnesses of God's love to the world. And so as we study the life of Jesus, we don't see him drawing away from lost sheep, from people that live their life in opposition to God, but rather Jesus makes himself available, approachable, not by acting like them, but by bringing the kingdom of God near to them wherever they are. And so we see the fullness of grace and the fullness of truth perfectly in the life of Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 5, for several chapters, he has the Sermon on the Mount, which is the manifesto of the kingdom of God. Jesus, in this sermon, raises the bar of what truth is in this long sermon. And we hear Jesus say things like, if you call your friend an idiot, you're in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse a person, you're in danger of hell fire. Anyone who looks at a woman with lust in his eyes has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And if your hand, even your right hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. Better than that, than find yourself in hell. And so Jesus goes on and on in over two and a half chapters, throwing truth bombs to the crowds of people. And Jesus actually mentions hell more than anyone in the Bible. Yet here's the incredible thing that you must know about Jesus, that after speaking his convictions concerning the truth of God, we see him start now down the dusty roads of life through the rest of his ministry, trying to sort out all the sin that was so prevalent in his culture of that day. And so after this hard message on truth about sin, and we see Jesus in Matthew 8, who's also full of grace, heal a Roman centurion who is completely outside of the covenant relationship with God. And then we see Jesus having uh, lunch with Matthew, a tax collector and friend of Rome. And we pick up this story in Matthew 2, when Matthew invited his fellow tax collectors and many other notorious sinners to be his guests so that they could meet Jesus and his disciples. But when some of the Religious saw him eating with these men of ill repute. They said to Jesus' disciples, How can he stand it to eat with such scum? <laughs> well, when Jesus heard what they were saying, he told them, Listen, sick people need the doctor, not healthy ones. And then there was another time we see Jesus at lunch with religious leaders, and suddenly, out of nowhere, comes a sinful woman who rushes in and washes his feet and anoints his head with oil. And the religious at that lunch were appalled that he wouldn't even allow such a woman of ill repute to even touch him. But that's 
the point. Jesus was full of grace. And so we see Jesus, the real Jesus, holding intention, total truth about his convictions of holiness before a holy God. And yet at the same time, he had the grace of compassion to minister to anyone in need. And this, my friend, is what marks Jesus above all else. Sermon on the Mount conviction, but yet staggering, controversial, even boundary-crossing compassion. You know, Christian, if you really want to follow Jesus, then you must walk in integrity in this world. We must learn to follow Jesus on this tight rope of holy convictions and, and raw compassion. That's the only option, really, to be like Jesus, to be a witness of Christ in loving and welcoming sinners. And now, if you are a person that has been hurt and disillusioned by Christians, then please accept my apology on behalf of myself and my fellow believers. And just know that Jesus, the person of Jesus, came full of grace and full of truth. The two things everyone is looking for. Look to the person of Jesus, friend, and you will find life. And then come and follow him for all it's worth. And we would be happy to help you in your journey knowing Jesus. So get in touch with us if that is your desire. Until next time, dear friend, may God richly bless you.